Hello everyone, welcome to Radiology Case Review Series. In this video, we are going to look at imaging of a 9-month-old child who presented to emergency department for evaluation of daily vomiting. As part of initial examination, we did quick MRI brain examination, which is a limited MRI examination where we acquire images of the brain in three planes using haste sequences. Let's look at the MRI images. As you can see, on the axial T2 images, there is a posterior cranial fossa mass which has multiple cystic foci. The epicenter of the mass is likely arising from the fourth ventricle. You can see dilatation of the third ventricle and fourth ventricle. Patient subsequently underwent complete MRI brain examination under sedation. On the DWI sequences, we can clearly see restricted diffusion within the solid portions of this lesion. Again, we can identify the multiple peripheral cystic foci. Following administration of intravenous contrast, there were patchy regions of enhancement in the solid portions of the tumor. There were no metastatic lesions identified. Perfusion imaging demonstrated increased tumoral vascularity in the solid portions. SWI images demonstrated multiple internal foci of susceptibility, suggestive of microhemorrhages. So we are dealing with a child who is less than one year old, presenting with posterior cranial fossa mass, with likely epicenter in the fourth ventricle, with multiple cystic foci, heterogeneous enhancement of the solid portions, which also demonstrates increased tumoral vascularity and multiple foci of internal microhemorrhages. So this is a nice algorithm whenever we are faced with a child with posterior cranial fossa mass, as we walk through this algorithm, so we are dealing with a mass likely arising from the fourth ventricle. The lesion demonstrates low ADC signal. The child is less than three years old. So most likely diagnosis is ATRT. Another possibility could be medulloblastoma, particularly sonic hedgehog type. But although based on the patient's age, I would strongly favor ATRT. Indeed, at pathology, the tumor demonstrated classic rhabdoid morphology and there was absence of expression of smart b one also known as INI1 gene, imaging appearances and the pathology was consistent with ATRT. In terms of uh, imaging and even on the standard histopathological examination, ATRT resembles medulloblastoma or embryonal tumor with multilayered rosettes. So age plays a critical role in terms of diagnosing or at least suggesting this diagnosis on the imaging and as we saw in our patient there can be internal tumoral hemorrhage peripheral localized cyst as we saw in our patient and this lesion demonstrates low adc and low t2 signal consistent with high vascular uh, cellularity the lesion demonstrates internal wavy enhancement as we saw in our patient 15 percent of these patients can demonstrate meningeal metastasis at the time of diagnosis in terms of ATRT, it is a rare tumor. It comprises less than 2% of pediatric brain tumors. However, in children less than three years of age, ATRT accounts for almost 20% of the posterior cranial fossa tumors. And the characteristic genetic mutation, as we saw in our patient, is absence of expression of smark b one also known as INI1, or smark a 4 gene. In this research, they tried to uh, identify molecular subgroups based on imaging. And what they noticed was there are three types, sonic hedgehog type, tyrosine type, and MYC type. MYC type is the only one which you can see ATRT in the spinal cord, whereas sonic hedgehog type is the only type which can also occur supratentorially. And this is the breakdown from their research group. MYC type is the only type which will occur in the spinal cord. So as we saw from that research group, based on the genetic expression, DNA methylization and enhancement pattern, there are three subtypes, MYC type, tyrosine type and sonic hedgehog type. I hope you found this case to be informative. Thanks for your attention.